Hi everyone, Rachel here. Welcome to the Ditch the Diet podcast. So thank you for joining me for another episode of the Ditch the Diet podcast, everyone. Um, If you are brand new to the podcast, I would like to say welcome. Um, I'm really glad that you found us. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast um, so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. Remember, there are almost 70 previous episodes that you can listen to, so please go ahead and have a look at our previous episodes to see if any of them take your fancy. If you're a long-term listener, I just want you to know that I appreciate you very, very much. And if you haven't already done so, please could you hit the five-star review button and leave me a lovely review um, because that would help me to reach more people and I really would appreciate it so much. So if you're brand new to the Ditch the Diet podcast, this is a podcast for people all over the world who want to learn how to quit yo-yo dieting and start living a healthier lifestyle without restriction. We want to help you say goodbye to food guilt and start improving your relationship with food Um, obviously this podcast is sponsored by the Ditch the Diet Academy which is a membership site that's your alternative to a lifetime of slimming clubs where we teach you the exact steps to take in order to quit dieting forever improve your relationship with food and get your body confidence back so you can check us out at ditchthedietacademy.com another slightly different episode this week and I wanted to share with you a recording that I did for my lovely friend Fiona Thomas for her podcast, which is called the Positive People Podcast, um, all about my journey with anxiety and depression. Now, Fiona and her colleague who run the Positive People Podcast are doing a special series this month um, in light of Mental Health Awareness Month. And I thought, that it would be a good idea to share my story on my own podcast as well. So I'm going to share this story with you in the hope that it gives you some insight into what my mental health journey has been like. And the reason for that is that I, you know, I like to be open and honest about these things because I feel like if I'm open and honest about these things, then it might be able to help someone else out there who's listening to this podcast that's maybe struggling at the moment or going through a really difficult time to understand that, yes, there will always be challenging times um, when you have a mental health condition, but you can um, recover and you can have good days as well as bad. So I'd like to share this with you today Um, and hopefully it will help in some way Um, I'll be back at the end I'll tell you a little bit more about the Positive People podcast and where you can find that as well because I highly recommend that you give it a listen but um, until then I hope you enjoy this episode thanks Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Watson. I am a 34 year old Scottish born and bred girl who lives in South Yorkshire now. Um, I am a business owner. I own my own uh, my own online business. Um, it's called Ditch the Diet and I teach people how to learn, how to quit dieting. I teach them about nutrition, um, about how to lose weight and keep it off without any restrictive diets and I do this through a series of online courses through a membership site so that's what I do um, but for the purpose of this podcast I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my back the my background with mental illness um, I have anxiety and depression and I have struggled with this since I was about 19 years old so it's quite a long time that it's been going on um, it started off when I was 19 really was when something triggered anxiety. I had a, like a pivotal moment, I suppose. Um, and from then, really from that day forward, I have struggled with it all of my life. Um, and I guess never really received the help that I really, really needed until very, very recently. So there was about a decade possibly longer where I went just kind of learning about it myself and trying to treat things myself and not really succeeding 
So um, I've always been an anxious child as well, according to my mum. Um, I was an anxious child. I was often upset and stressed. Um, so I guess it's kind of been part of my life for as long as I can really remember. So the pivotal moment for me was actually when I was on the bus to Glasgow from where I lived. It was about a 20 minute journey on the bus and um, I had an overwhelming sort of sweaty, panicky feeling come over me as a result of having an upset stomach the day before. So I suffer with IBS as well, or irritable bowel syndrome. And basically, for those of you that have IBS or know about it, um, it can come on really, really quickly, really unexpectedly, without warning. And it's like a sudden urge to need to get to a toilet, basically. Um, And I was on a bus when this happened. And obviously, it's very difficult to find a toilet on a Glasgow bus. So I had a massive panic attack thinking, how am I going to get to the toilet? If I need to go, um, I'm in the middle of this motorway and there's no way I'm getting off this bus. And as, as small as that sounds of a thing, that, that moment literally changed my entire life. And from that moment forward, I panicked every single time I went out of the house that this was going to happen again. And... Honestly, nothing actually happened that day. The pains went away and I spent the rest of the day in Glasgow and had a great time and didn't really think very much of it other than it being a bit of a a blip. But from then on, every time I felt that feeling that comes over you when you have an IBS flare up, I started to panic and anxiety was really, really bad. So I guess in a way, um, my anxiety was all about being scared to go out in public if I was ill. And to this day, it still affects me, but I can manage it a lot better now. There was a period of time where I didn't actually leave the house for months and months and months, um, even doing things like going round to the the village shop, which was less than a five-minute walk away, was unbearable to even think about doing it, um, let alone getting to work. So it did affect my life in a big way, um, to the point where actually, fast forward a few years... Um, I was off work a lot with anxiety and IBS. They go hand in hand. There's a relationship between what goes on in your gut and what goes on in your brain. Um, And I got sent to occupational health various different times in the job that I was working in at the time. And it got to the point where I thought, I don't want to feel like this when I'm at work all the time. I don't want to be made feel like I'm an inconvenience because I'm often not well. Um, And I just realised that being in employment was maybe not for me because it was not affecting my mental health in a positive way. And I was often very, very worried about what other people thought of me. And actually, um, I reckon that deep down, the thing that makes me most anxious is not being ill in public, but it's the thought of what other people would think of me if I was to suddenly become really unwell in public and that's taken me quite a long time to dig deep enough to realise that that's actually what I'm fearing the most and not the actual getting ill part um so I decided that I would branch out on my own and I was in the fitness industry at the time so I decided that I would start my own business become self-employed and then I would be able to manage my time better um, to suit my own uh, needs when it came to my mental illness um, so that's kind of that's kind of how I became self-employed. I became a personal trainer. I taught fitness classes and things like that, which you would think, gosh, how could someone that couldn't leave the house to go and buy bread and milk stand in front of 50 people and teach something like body pump or body attack? But And that's not something I can actually explain it. For me, doing that kind of thing gave me the gave me confidence, and it really, really helped to build my confidence um, to spend a lot of time in front of other people. And I think that really helped me a lot. But now, fast forward, I um, I decided to to start an online business um, a couple of years ago, and I now work fully online, which makes my life really, really flexible. So I can work from home, I can work from a coffee shop, I can have a day off if my anxiety is really bad. Um, And don't get me wrong, the actual process of getting to the point where I am now where I'm earning a really, really good income um, and I can afford to do pretty much whatever I want, anytime, has been an extremely stressful um, 
an extremely stressful and difficult thing to do for anyone that has started their own business freelancing or running an online business or even running a bricks and mortar business you'll know that the stress that comes with that is at times <sighs> unbelievable um, but I would not change it for the world even though um, in the last two years I've developed um, depression as well so before that it was only really anxiety that I struggled with um, low moods that had never really been a big part of my life I, I was always a really bubbly person I still am um, I was I never struggled with low mood I never struggled, struggled with low energy I was always um, known as the one that had all the energy and was loved being around people and all that kind of thing but in the last couple of years I've struggled with low mood um, or depression I was diagnosed with chronic stress last year um, and I put that down to as a result of work but to be honest with you the stress that I feel is not bad stress it's it's positive stress but stress is stress and it's manifested in me as low mood or depression and there have been days in the past few months where I found it really difficult to even function and it's not like me at all and it was it actually scared me so even getting out of bed in the morning was a struggle some days some days I would sit and just cry all day because I felt like such a failure um but when you look at the facts I'm really not a failure at all but there was this overwhelming intrusive thoughts that were just there all the time for maybe like three or four days I would have bouts of it and then the cloud would lift I describe it to people as though someone puts a puts a hood over my head and it's like the real me is masked by this hood and I can't seem to get out of it and this hood gives me loads and loads of intrusive negative thoughts that aren't real um and it's, it's a horrible thing to experience um as for treatment, um, I guess it was really last year that I decided that I really needed to knock this on the head because it, it really did start to affect my life again in a big way and I was scared that it was going to spiral out of control again like it did back um, in my late teens. Um, so I went to the doctor and asked for help. And I've not had a very good experience with GPs in the past, so doing that was kind of a big thing for me. And I've always been quite wary of medications because I've been on several different medications for depression um, in the past and always had a negative experience with them. I was on a drug called sertraline last year which gave me suicidal thoughts and made me feel worse. So the thought of going on, on medication again was pretty scary but I did take the advice of the doctor and I did go back on a different medication which I think has, has helped. Um, I can't say it has been you know, a drastic improvement but um, so the medication is just a little tiny part of that. The main thing for me when it comes to um, controlling my mental health is exercising regularly, spending as much time outdoors as possible, um, eating well. The connection between our, our gut and our digestive system and our brain cannot be ignored. So I focus really on a healthy diet, um, lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of water, um, minimising alcohol, um, just doing as much as I can to physically make myself in a, in a physically healthy way because if I'm physically healthy I am mentally healthy as well they go hand in hand for me um, the hardest part about living with a mental illness um, I guess there are two things for me um, one of them is that I'm, I'm a really really outgoing person I love doing stuff outdoors, doing crazy things. I've done a skydive before. I'm really outgoing and I love doing high energy things. And sometimes when there are days where I'm really not feeling well at all, the real me sort of gets masked by this person that I don't recognise. And I find that really difficult. I'm starting to accept it now and I'm starting to realise that it does only happen a, a few days and then it, it sort of leaves me again. But I find that really frustrating that it's almost like I can't be myself. Um, and then the other thing, I guess, is the impact that it has on the people that are around me. Um, and I know I know people say, oh, you shouldn't be worried about what other people think, but I do. I genuinely do. Um, there are people that, you know, that are in my circle that I do care about what they think. And I do care about the impact that I have on other people. And um, so I would say that's quite hard as well. Um, and 
I think I'm in a, in a fortunate position in that even when I do have these negative thoughts, I do have the tools now to, to turn it around pretty quickly. And I do give myself that bit of self-compassion that says, do you know what, if you're not feeling good, then you don't have to push yourself today. Um, one of the other questions that I've been asked is, what is one thing that surprised you about your illness or recovery? I guess I I was surprised that I started to suffer from depression in the first place Um, because I have a really great life. I have, you know, that way where I think to myself, what have you got to be depressed about? You've got a lovely home, a nice car, you can afford to buy food, you live in a really nice place, you have a great family, all these things, and a really good job. Um, So I I guess I was surprised um, that I even got it in the first place. So it just goes to show that this can happen to anybody and it's really common so that surprised surprised me that I got it um, in the first place Um, recovery wise mm, I wouldn't say that I'm fully recovered yet (laughs) Um, but mm, I can't think of anything really surprising but I, I think to me the number of people that are out there that can give you support is not surprising but it's just amazing because through having these problems through having anxiety and depression I've connected with a lot of people um, and you'd be surprised how many people feel exactly the same way that you do you really would so if it is something that you're struggling with then ask for help because there are so many people out there that are willing to help you and quite honestly I do feel I do feel pretty unwell sometimes still and my anxiety still does have a massively profound effect on my day-to-day life and I have to plan things ahead a lot Um, I don't like uncertainty I like to know exactly what's happening so that I can prepare in my head for it but um, I I run my own business I run a household I hold down this job that I've created for myself which I really enjoy and I'm quite proud of myself for achieving all of that at the same time as battling this somewhat annoying illness (laughs) so if you want to find out more about what I do you can um, pop to ditchthedietacademy.com if you would like to get in touch with me to talk about how what you eat and how you exercise can affect your mental health then please get in touch you can just pop me an email it's just rach r-a-c-h at ditch the diet academy dot com um, we run an online membership site that is fully accessible to anybody who wants to join um, and that's just ditch the diet academy dot com forward slash join um, and yeah if anyone would like to connect with me please do so um, even if it's just to reach out and ask for help I'd be more than happy to talk to you thanks for listening and um, yeah talk to you soon so there we have it a slightly different episode today I hope it's been insightful for you Um, and I hope it's also helped to raise some awareness of um, mental illness um, in light of Mental Health Awareness Month this month Um, if you would like to chat to me about anything raised in this podcast episode you can get in touch with me it's no problem at all just pop me an email it's dead easy the email address you're looking for is rach at ditchthedietacademy.com please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast although you're listening to this episode you may not have subscribed yet please hit the subscribe button and if you're a long-term listener and have enjoyed this episode please don't forget to hit the five star review button on itunes where you're listening to right now it would mean a lot to me please don't forget to do that thanks for listening i'll be back next thursday with another episode of the ditch deck podcast